Hello, everybody. This is John Mark Johnson Jr. again, host of Reformed GGA. And this is going to be an update video on the Palmetto State Armory Rock in 5.7 by 28. Uh, the reason I'm making an update is that I figured out what was causing the issue with the firing pin staying forward. Uh, so I wanted to let you guys know that and uh, also show you guys how if your problem is similar, you can replace it on your own instead of going through PSA repairs. By the way, uh, PSA did get back with me today, this being Tuesday, and it sounds like in the next day or two they're going to send me the label to get this thing shipped off and repaired, hopefully. Uh, but back to the uh, firing pin issue. Uh, what I found is that the firing pin had off actually broken off of the striker unit. It's just one unit in there. I was originally under the impression that there were two pieces, a proper striker and a proper firing pin, but it turns out it was a combo unit. And uh, I saved the spare uh, piece of the striker, of the, uh, sorry, of the striker in this little envelope that they sent their odds and ends in. So let's see if I can get that there. All right, so, oh, that is a screw. There we go. That's what I'm trying to look at right there. All right, so that is the end of the firing pin, the end of the striker that was causing the problems. Turns out it had just broken and therefore was staying forward because it wasn't attached to anything. Um, yeah, so yeah, it just completely broke off in there. And let's show you guys how you can uh, also get out of it. Uh, sorry, get it out as well and do replacements as necessary. Um, like I said, I'm going to send this in to PSA and have them do all the repairs on it. But if you want to do the repairs on your own, uh, they actually offer these strikers on their website. You can buy them for like 13 bucks plus shipping and handling. And I'll show you how to get in there and do that. Like with any gun repair, make sure that it is checked and cleared first. So empty magwell. Empty chamber. It is checked and cleared. Go ahead and uh, pull the trigger. And after doing that, then we're going to go ahead and pull down on these tabs that are in the trigger guard here, in the center of the trigger guard. So pull down on those tabs, pull back slightly on the slide, and it should come apart just like that. And here is the lower that has been causing problems with trigger reset issues. And let me grab a tool to point with here. And this little sear catch right here is the problem. Uh, that sear catch is not very big. And then the catch on the striker, this piece right here, is also not very wide at all. And so if the two are misaligned at all, and torquing on the trigger evidently does that, I talked about that in the last video, it's just enough that the catch, that very, very, very painfully thin little catch right there, that itty bitty thing, that catch right there, can just... Just ever so barely miss that striker. And yeah, this striker right here, that piece. Yeah, and that's what causes the issue with the trigger not resetting properly. And we've seen that before with other guns. The Taurus GX4 also has a very small uh, catch on the striker and a fairly small uh, sear in the actual frame itself. It turns out that that thin design, while it does uh, make for a little bit easier manufacturing, it is prone to malfunctions, and failing to reset the trigger is oftentimes a, a, a consequence of that fairly poor design. All right, getting back to the slide here, let's go ahead and take the recoil spring assembly out of the gun. And then, of course, to get this barrel off, we're going to need to take off the threaded portion. And in my experience, the little rubber O-ring that they have on there um, makes getting the uh, barrel through the opening kind of difficult. And at first I was trying to remove the O-ring first, 
And by the way, it's a good thing that they have the O-ring on there. It helps keep the thread, thread protector in place. Or it can if you uh, chose to suppress it, whatnot. Of course, after asking the ATF for permission to do what you want with your own property. But that's a whole other story. Um, but I find that getting the O-ring off before dis uh, taking the barrel out actually doesn't work very well. So I've just kind of been massaging it through. There we go. And then, once it's out, then I can actually get enough purchase on the O-ring to take it off. And I usually I use a rag, and I basically just unscrew it from the threads. Let's see here. Come on. Let's see if they come off. There we go. Just hung up in the rag there a little bit. Yeah, there's the O-ring. Go ahead and set that off to the side. Uh, the barrel does not seem to be an issue, at least not yet. We haven't fired the gun yet, so we don't know if there's any surprises there. But this looks fairly normal, and I don't expect any major problems from that. Uh, but as far as getting to the striker, now we've got it somewhat uh, separated. But the striker in here is what we're actually trying to, to get at. And we've got to go a little bit further. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little detent on the back, takedown detent. Just use an appropriately sized punch. And there's a piece in there that is definitely under quite a bit of spring tension, so definitely want to be in the place to catch it. Then the piece should slide out, and then here's the spring that definitely... Definitely wants to come out quite a bit. This is the string for spring for the striker. And by the way, this thing is a pain to get back in. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, and then the whole plastic assembly here should be able to slide out. And sometimes it's a little stubborn, which isn't a big deal. So we'll go ahead and kind of persuade it out here. Come on. Doing things around the camera is fun and interesting, I would tell you. All right, now this uh, whole assembly in the back of the slide here is plastic, so be very, 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 very gentle with it. You don't want to ruin that. Let's see here, did that move? No, that did move it, not quite enough. Like I said, working around the camera is a little hard, so please forgive me for that, folks. Mm. Yeah, imagine trying to do, like, work on your car or whatever with a camera crew in the way. That's kind of how this feels. All right. Let's see here. Go ahead and put that punch back. Put the camera back. Trying to clean up a little bit as I go here. All right, so here is the rear assembly, and the rear assembly has a few notable parts. Uh, first, on the side here, yeah, you'll notice the uh, drop safety mechanism. That's just basically a little spring and lat and a cover type thing. Let's go ahead and set that to the side. And then this plastic piece that we took out is actually a two-piece, so it'll split right down the middle. And out comes the striker. Perfect. And this is what was causing the problem. So the way that the striker is supposed to be is such that you have the striker mechanism and then the little firing pin tip. But as you can see, the firing, tip, uh, firing pin tip broke off of the rest of the striker. And so, yeah, now it's definitely not going to work. That's kind of how that goes. And you can see that the striker here is a very, very, very simple design. And I can see why they wanted it, because it's nice and thin and small, and uh, the construction just feels, frankly, kind of cheap. And um, I'm betting that they did not get this properly treated. If anything, I think it was actually over-treated. And uh, that's what caused the problem with uh, the... The tip uh, breaking off, a lot of times they'll get the metal a little too hard, a little too much carbon. And then when you dry fire something 
that has too much carbon in it, whether it be a striker or a proper firing pin mechanism. If there's a little too much carbon, you get work hardening. Work hardening, work hardening causes the um, the piece to be fairly brittle, and then eventually something is going to break. And where there is this kind of hard angle is where, in fact, it did break. And I've mentioned this before, although I didn't really explain it very well in other videos, uh, but designs like this where you have really sharp angles and really uh, jagged transitions I do not like in gun design in general just because it tends to concentrate force. I actually mentioned this when I was talking about the uh, the Jackal internals, the uh, uh, specifically the bolt carrier for the Jackal. I said that I didn't like how thin the the parts were, and I didn't really explain much more than that, and I should have, because a lot of people were confused by what I meant. Um, I wasn't saying that those pieces on the Jackal uh, bolt carrier were thin compared to other guns. I was saying that with how angular all the pieces on the Jackal bolt were, that relative to that design, the pieces were too thin. Uh, well, if you're going to have these really sharp angles in a design, that's fine, but it needs to be big and beefy. Otherwise, if it's too small, if it's too thin, then what happens is force gets redirected around these jagged edges in very strange ways, and that concentration of force will very oftentimes um, cause parts to snap if the piece has not been heat treated properly. If the piece is uh, too hard, too brittle, uh, yeah, things are going to happen. And like I said, it doesn't really take a whole lot because there will actually be some of that hardening that happens just in the process of dry firing. Um, like I said, if it has too much carbon, it will start to cause the atoms to align, which makes them harder, but it also makes them more brittle. And you get things like this little itty-bitty firing pin that broke off the striker. All right, so the solution would be to uh, either... Quest that PSA send you out a new striker or just go ahead and buy one off their website. Like I said, they're like 12, 13 bucks. I think it's 13 bucks plus shipping and handling. Uh, and of course, tax eh, for your local area. All that good stuff. But yeah, 13 bucks and you can just replace it. And let me make sure that I can actually get it back in here properly. All right, so all that I'm trying to do is line the, the notch here. Good. And then I've got to line the other side with that. Like I said, working around the camera is definitely a little bit difficult, so please be understanding of that limitation. But yeah, should go back in fairly easily. And then we need to get the, um, the uh, drop safety in. That just goes on this little shelf that's sitting out here. So, should be with the striker back. Should be able to basically just kind of tip it into place. Just like that, so everything's nice and flush. Remember, striker needs to be in its most rear position. And then we're going to just slide the whole thing back into the slide. There we go. And you should be able to just get it in with finger uh, pressure. You want to really be careful of having to use a hammer on things. Like I said, I used a hammer to get it out. Uh, but like I said, I was being very gentle with those uh, taps. And using a punch that has a little bit more give than the others. This is my brass punch. has just a little bit more give than, uh, than the others. Helps me be a little bit more delicate when I need to. Good tool to have around. Alright, so that is... The striker back in and the main uh, housing within the slide being back in place. And of course, we got the uh, drop safety back in there properly. Now we'll go ahead and replace the striker spring. And now comes the very, very, very difficult part of getting uh, the back plate on. And with this spring, which is very, very powerful, that is extremely, extremely difficult. So what I have found to be a semi-useful way of doing it is to basically get a bunch of punches lined up and start with the biggest one uh, going to the smallest. We're going to basically just kind of progressively compress this thing. So under 
the biggest punch first, and just the, the shape of this thing is rounded. And so it tends to slide off of the punches very, very, very easily. Which, of course, is a pain. Uh, and like I said, working around the camera is difficult. I haven't done this with the camera on before. And this I might have to do off screen here. I apologize. Uh, it's a simple enough design. It's just that rounded tip is very, very hard to get it to go where I want it to. Come on. Okay. It's kind of held in by tension right now. If I can just get enough. Okay, that size of punch isn't working anymore. Okay, down slightly smaller. There we go. Like I said, I have to have a few punches lined up so that as I'm able to compress it into place, I can keep pushing it down while slowly getting the cover up there. Until that last little bit where I can finally get it in. Uh, simple enough design. It's not bad in that regard. It's just getting it back together is definitely a little bit of a pain. But yeah, that is how I found out that the firing pin had simply snapped off of the striker. And so the repair would either be to send the slide back into PSA so that they can put in the new striker themselves or just simply order uh, the striker off the website. Like I said, I think it's about $13 plus uh, tax and shipping and handling. And that is a repair you can do yourself if the need arises. All right, let's get this thing back together. Barrel goes in next. Go ahead and put back on the O-ring. Like I said, this O-ring is just about impossible to get off when it's actually in the slide like this. But it does a very good job of keeping the thread protector in place or anything else that you would have screwed on to the other end. And then as far as tightness goes, I probably over tighten just about everything. But usually, as long as it's fairly uh, snug, it'll stay in place pretty well. Uh, this has nothing to do with the repair, but just an interesting point of how this gun operates. Uh, this gun is lever-delayed, and it works partially levered and delayed. Part of it is basically just a, a simple blowback recoil system. That's what the mainspring does. But there is an auxiliary system that helps the uh, barrel travel with the slide for just a little bit. And it uses this uh, little angular uh, ramp here. This ramp uh, presses against this little lever piece right here. Let me see if I can pull it down so you can show you. So yeah, that little front ramp. Here's this pin back here holds the gun together. So you pull it down to get the gun apart. Uh, but this uh, little ramp here is part of the delayed blowback system that this gun uses. And so this is actually pressed against by this little angle eh, piece on the barrel. And so the barrel has to overcome that lever in order to move, and that's what delays it just a little bit. So this is not a lock breach ad, uh, delayed recoil system like most other semi-auto handguns are. This one is actually lever delayed. So like I said, there's a little angle piece here that presses against the little lever in there, and that's what delays it. But going back to reassembling this thing, go ahead and take the recoil spring. Uh, the side that has uh, the little plastic piece on the end is the uh, piece that faces towards the front of the gun. And then there's a little rod in here that you have to push down and compress that in. Try to get it fairly square there behind that little wedge piece that I showed you. Yeah, that should be decent enough. All right, and then to put it back together, go ahead and pull those tabs down. Let me show you what tab I'm talking about. 
these tabs right here are what I'm talking about. All right, yeah, so go ahead and pull those down. Get it kind of lined up. And there we go. And that is back together. And while I'm at it, I might as well go ahead and show you guys the other malfunction that I discovered with this thing. One was that the firing pin was staying forward. And it was staying forward because it had broken off in the end of the firing pin channel. So, yeah, I need to get that replaced. And then the other issue was the trigger. It wouldn't always reset. So, again, make sure it's safe. Nothing in the magwell. Nothing in the chamber. Put it in the safe direction and fire. And the first one usually does just fine. It's the reset that is the problem. If I uh, apply enough leftward force to this trigger while I'm uh, char uh, charging it, Sometimes it will catch the sear like it's supposed to. I mentioned the sear in there was really, really, really small, and the uh, sear catch on the striker was really, really small, and they can miss each other sometimes, and it's usually if I have leftward pressure on the trigger, so let's see if it does it this time. We should hear a reset, good. And I'm going to go ahead and let it all the way out, and now that it's reset, we should be able to hear the striker drop again. Let's see if it'll do it. And it won't. But if I apply, again, hold it back and apply pressure in the other direction, rightward direction. Now, when I run the action, I should be able to get the reset. There's the reset. I'm going to let it all the way out. And then when I pull back, I should be able to get the striker to drop. And this time it did it. Okay, again, I'm going to hold it down. And I'm pressing to the left with a decent amount of force here. Um, you know, in a real-world situation in which you would need to use the gun, sometimes you would apply excessive force, adrenaline, that kind of thing. So I'm applying quite a bit of leftward force. Charge it. Let's see if it caught. Okay, there's the reset. I'm going to go ahead and let it all the way out again. And now I should be able to get the striker to drop. And I can't. Dead trigger. Now, it's not always consistent in that. Sometimes when I'm pressing to the right, it does, in fact, catch, especially if I'm not using a lot of force. Like that time, for example, it did work. It's a sometimes issue, and I don't want a sometimes issue, especially if it's a gun that I'm going to rely on. You know, it might be only like 1 in 20 times of applying leftward pressure that, you know, it doesn't properly reset. Um, but 1 in 20 times is still enough to get you killed if you're in the wrong situation with it. Um, so yeah, not definitely not ideal. So the slide is going to need a new striker because the firing pin tip literally broke off and got stuck in the firing pin channel. That was not good, obviously. And then... As I just demonstrated, the trigger does not reset properly all the time when leftward force is applied to the trigger. Okay, that time was good. That time was also good. I'm not liking that. Okay, let's see here. And that time not. Like I said, sometimes when I apply leftward pressure, it does work, and sometimes it doesn't, and that's the problem. I don't want something that only sometimes works. All right. Thank you guys very much for your time and attention. For those of you who are in Christ, go with God and be blessed. For those of you who are not, I pray that you would come to know the true Christ of history, the only genuine Savior of mankind. Amen.